Hey you guys, it's Rachel here <clears throat> with Sensa Tempo Connie Corso. So I've got I've got our new Oh they're I've got our new um, livestock guardian here. And um, we named him we've named him Tilicum. And so what we're gonna do is bring him out <clears throat> and just work with him around the chickens and um, we're just kind of introducing him to the chickens and we're just going to ensure that he doesn't chase them and when he does that we communicate clearly and effectively that that is not okay. Oh crap, should I go get this goat's milk? Yes, hurry, quick, go put that in the fridge, yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Luckily, we just we just got home. So, so far so good. No, no, um, no, uh, no chasing yet. Mmm. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> I think that they're really scared of him because they've been, they've been preyed on by, um, foxes and he's a small moving animal and I think they really don't like that. Oh, look, we've got a predator already. We've got a, got a hawk up there. I don't know, come back some. Look at that. Hmm. Yep, there it is. Let's see if I can get it. Nope, I lost it again. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> so anyway. Oh. Where are you at? There you are. There you are. What you doing? Look at them all paying attention. So I will um I will be getting him clipped in the summertime. Um, it's really super hot. Reese is a, um, Reese was a groomer for a long time, so she, I asked her opinion on it, and, um, and she said that it was, um, a good idea for me to, um, to get him, to get him clipped, because just of, you know, how hot it is, and that he's gonna be out here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to thoroughly fence off, I'm just gonna finish fencing off this area here, reinforce all this area here, um, from there from the barn, and then also here, and then um, I will, I will um, continue fencing off this whole area here and around there, and so this will be the whole entire area that this dog will be able to patrol and have access to. Um, whether so whether or not he'll stay back here will depend on one thing and that is did this puppy inherit inherit um the great pyrenees tendency to roam hopefully not okay we i specifically chose the puppy that looked the most like a newfoundland phenotypically because that means that more than likely um i'm capitalizing on those genes and, um, and so I'm more likely to get that, that temperament. Also, this puppy was, um, was more interested in Reese. Um, she's the first one that, that um, went and saw these puppies because they are um, a family friend of hers. And, um, and so they're Great Pyrenees, um, uh, Landseer, um, Newfoundland cross puppies. The mother is the Landseer. And that's another thing I like is that in, in my experience, I find that um, female dogs oftentimes imprint their temperaments onto their puppies. And so I'm kind of hoping for that as well. So anyway, so far so good. He does seem to be more interested in me um, than roaming and exploring, 
which is a good thing. I like to see that. The mother was extremely friendly and um, just very impersonable, but also fantastic at doing her job. Like um, there was, I don't know, some kind of disturbance um, in the force <laughs> on the farm and her and the father just took off and they bolted in an opposite direction to go and handle something. And, um, and so anyway, so that was good. And, um, so I saw that. And so these are, these are, you know, he is going to be a working dog, but, um, he'll also be, you know, he's going to be, you know, a pet, right? Like we love him. So, um, so anyway, chickens are checking him out. So you see how they move away from him. And he's just going to smell. Let's see what he does. And I'll just tell you, I just picked him up from the breeder. Just picked him up. First thing I did was bring him over here. You know, first thing I did. So... Tilly! Tillicum! Pretty baby boy. Pretty baby boy. See, and if that's what he does his whole life, he'll be great. Just lays here with the chickens hanging out at the at, at the door of the home. That'd be great. You're a good baby. You're a good boy, Tillicum. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. I like how he just sits and he watches. Even though they move away from him, he doesn't immediately run to try to chase them, which is really important. Let me get this. This is some this is some rotten spaghetti squash. It had a bunch of seeds in it that we gave to the well, it had really sprouts and it sprouted. These roosters, look at that. See that, see that, that red one there? That's a, a Rhode Island red. I specifically got him because I wanted a really protective rooster. And there he is doing his job. And I like that. We, I mean, we have just really tried to build up our defenses here uh, because of uh, the predation that we experienced. So, comes down to, um, you know, these guys, these are our, these are our little defenders. And then we've got this guy here. This will be another line of defense. Tillicum. He don't know his name yet. Tillicum. So what, like I said, what I like that I'm noticing so far, mind you, he just got here. So this really... Um, doesn't mean much is what I'll say. I mean, it may mean something. It may be um, very, indi you know, indicative of what he's going to be like, or it, it may not be at all. So um, it's just too early to tell right now. But what I will tell you that I do like about what I'm seeing is that in every opportunity as a puppy, whenever these animals moved away from him, which in a lot of dogs would um, instinctually trigger what we call prey drive. It's not something that they really, um, they can be taught to control it, but the initial impulse to do so is not, it's subconscious. Okay. So, um, you have to bring it into the conscience by, um, by, by, uh, training and, and it doesn't always work, right? Some breeds, it's just, it's, they are bred for prey drive in such a way that you can't, you know, you just can't, um, you can't reliably work it out of them. So this guy's doing a great job, but, um, doing exactly what he's supposed to do. But, um, but what, like I said, what I like is that he's not exhibiting that. You know, he's displaying interest. He looked at them, but aside from that, he just moved on and he's laying down and he's resting and, you know, being a good puppy. So I really like that. But, you know, we'll see how he does. I'll, I'll do another video whenever I introduce him to the dogs. Um, so... 
Golly, man. I'm worried about that red-tailed hawk that's out there, but hopefully these guys have got it. Everybody does seem like they're staying pretty close to home. So... But it's a nice it's a nice example of why we're getting this dog because the reality is that a dog what which which oh he's over there yeah this is our velocity female. Oja booja booja. I should let you run around out here, huh? So she was out of the actual thing white, that we built? White box, yeah. Oh, man. Dying it, Bobby? Yeah, we're going to have to figure that one out. How's she going to be the youngest doing that mess? Look at that. Look at that bard rock. That's another one that I bought specifically for Guardian. And look at him. He's watching the good birds, man. Doing their jobs. But, um, but anyway, you guys know with Preacher that, you know, a bird uh, can be um, deflected by a dog. So, oh my god, she's like, whoa, why is it fluffy? It's so fluffy, I'm gonna die. Oh, look at that, look at that gangster face he's got. Tillicum, Tillicum. Look at him, just chilling. Unbothered. Just chilling. He's still watching. Though. Definition of unbothered. Look at him. It's a little window of what he's going to be. Just quietly sitting there in front of his chicken coop. Just guarding. Watching. Look at him. Watching. Yeah. You gonna go to mama? Yeah, I see you. You're going to mama for love. Yes, you are. Just like Trinity would. Yes, yes you are. <laughs> you little puppy. He's so cute. Telecom. Tilly, telecom. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Your baby boy. Your, your baby boy. Yeah, there was quite the wreck. Wreck? In the kitchen. Oh no. You stinky baby. Did you do bad things? I cleaned it up. Did you do bad things in the kitchen while we were gone? Mwah. Kisses. Alrighty. Thank you for cleaning it up. She took the vent off of the vent. What? Yes. You oh took the God. vent off. Yes, you did. Oh Lord. Lucky you didn't try to like go in there and crawl the vent. Hi, Telecom. And he's keeping an eye out. She's wagging her tail, trying to like come over. Come here. Can you go say hi to Mr. Tillicum? He's just about so the reason we named him Tillicum is because I love orca whales, and Tillicum was um was one of my favorites. I I I just really love big, large whales, and you know, had he been in his natural environment, the things that happened wouldn't have happened, and you know, he um he would just be a big, awesome killer whale, but um. But anyway, but so I hold no judgment and there's no reference to what happened um, with Dawn. It's just for me, um, I knew this dog was going to be very big and impressive and he's going to be a guardian. So he's going to be big and strong. And he's, you know, I just felt like uh, I just felt like that was. Um, yeah, see. Yeah, exactly. So. When the chickens started running, she started walking over. See? You see how she wants to? Yeah. So, yeah, versus how he was super calm about it. Um, yeah, it's a good example, Savannah. He's still watching. I hear him mm -hmm. get all rowdy. Yeah. He's like a bear. No, we're not calling him bear. I know, but he's like a bear. Tillicum. He's got the fluffy legs. Yeah. And he will get more black spots as he ages. They, they do tend to get... More black spots on them. Oh, look at her coming over. She's still looking at the chickens in there, though. See that's. Mm. So he didn't run. See that, but she is pursuing. And Corso don't even have like super bad prey drive. Um, it can. That's, that's these are a dog that it can be trained out of, um, and sometimes they don't even have it. 
Um, and even these dogs. I mean, uh, even even not all not all livestock guardians are good with livestock. That's just the truth. Um, in fact, there's actually a YouTuber who is experiencing that right now. He's got um, an Italian um, herding or uh, livestock guardian. I think it's a a Marima or something like that, and didn't work out because the temperament's not there, and it just happens. You know, there's just like it just that's just the truth of it. Every working breed has um, dogs that just really don't have the temperament to do their job. Oh, and um, and a lot of times those dogs are great for pet homes oh. because, you know, they don't have to do their jobs in pet homes. So it's really not the end of the world. But um, so cute. but anyway, but Corso are such a multi-purpose dog that you're going to have some that have some prey drive. Um, but I've not seen one yet that it couldn't be worked out of as long as you were in view. I wouldn't trust them um, alone with livestock, but... Um, but I definitely feel like you can um, at least train them to where you can you can okay. do it. Um, I'm a fluffy boy. You know. Let's see. All right. Okay. I all right. I didn't have to step in. I thought I was gonna have to, but nope. He didn't do it. He just he, he. I think he already had the intention of moving forward, and then you know he just moved away. That's pretty awesome. I like to see that. Not interested right now. And what I'll do is I will I will just I, I will not leave him out here alone with them at all. Um, I don't believe in the whole like raising them with them um, at this age kind of thing. And um, every time I bring him out here, I'll just work with him. And if he ever displays that, then I will work with him. Because the reality is, is as he grows more confident, it would make more sense that he would begin to try that. But, um, but like I said, if he does begin to exhibit that behavior, then I will step in and I'll let him know not to do that. That's so cute. Oh, God, they all heard him. Hush, quiet down. That's so cute, his bark. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Don't get too dirty. Oh. <laughs> she's got to tuck her tail. He's yeah. got tail high. She's got a tail tuck. Oh. So one of the things we do have to do also is to is to avoid him imprinting on her behavior. So I have to be mindful of not allowing her to chase the chickens. Um, during this time and be very careful when I'm training him that I only ever have him out with dogs that do not chase chickens. That way, um, he doesn't ever try to do that, um, based upon what he's seeing from their she's behavior. Right yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to take them inside. It's hot. And, um, I'm putting her in the, the, the other box. Okay. So yeah, so I'm going to take these guys inside. Um, I think that's good for our training session right now. So... Oh, hide there too. I know it's hot over here. Yeah. Let's see what he does. See, he has to be able to explore. I would say just like I don't want to penalize him just for moving in that direction. I want to penalize actual chasing. You know what I mean? Um, or not if it's like penalize or penalize. Penalized. I don't know. Um, is that like the British way of saying it? I'm watching her though. She is watching the chicken. See? Yeah, you gotta watch her. Yeah. She's got pretty decent structure from what I'm seeing. I don't know. Is that the one you're keeping? Because I did put that other one in there from the litter. Yeah, no, I'm keep. Uh, I've got. Well, one of them hasn't sold yet, but I I did choose this black one. Hey, he's up in here. Oh, uh oh. He's in there. He's just watching him. He's just in there. <laughs> he's like, oh crap. He's like, I don't know if I was supposed to be in there. I mean, so so far, so far, he just seems curious to me. I'm not. I'm not seeing anything that I'm particularly worried about at this point. Bear baby. Um. 
So yeah. Well, alrighty, y'all. Well, I'm gonna let you go, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.